What's going on guys? So this is going to be a review for Karapika's Memories, the short manga chapters, because I needed to fill that fix a little bit in hiatus land here. So I needed to read what I haven't read so far so I can get fully encompassed on all things Hunter Hunter. Now my cat wants to leave the door as soon as I close it to start recording, then he claws on it and wants to, wants to go. That's, that's, just, that's just great. Annoying. Anyways, so I love my cat. He's great. Um, so anyways, Karapika's memory. So let's talk about this. It's very short, very sweet, very to the point, uh, especially that ending, Jesus Christ. <laughs> it was very abrupt, but uh, I really liked it. I liked it. Um, it doesn't really give you too much more insight into Karapika's character or anything like that. It doesn't kind of like give you any hidden clues or meanings as to what he's been doing. It just kind of shows you, one, how the Kurta clan uh, was or how they lived and how their society kind of functioned and also it shows you what the outside worlds or regular people's reactions to the Kurta clan is and some things that the Kurta clan has to do in order to be able to go see the outside world because they're basically locked into their little like forest dwelling area and apparently they kind of wander from time to time and it's only a group of like 130 people or something like that. It's a very small tight-knit group of people of the Kurda clan. They basically just kind of go from area to area and really they're not any different than any other kind of people with the exception of the whole Scarlet Eyes thing where where they get really excited or angry or irritated or their emotions spike basically their eyes turn scarlet which of course also gives them a boost of like speed and power and stuff like that but more so than using it for any kind of like violent purposes it's kind of just more of a burden than anything else. It's something that they specifically are like hiding away from the rest of society because society um, has a prejudice or a, a um, you know against them for this for this reason calling them the you know, messengers of the devil or something like that seeing the red in their eyes seeing the red eyes spike up basically it's something people don't really ex understand or accept and it's playing on that whole theme of people will judge you people are harsher than you think they are you think people in the outside world are okay they're the same of us as us but once they realize that we are different than them they will treat us differently and that's basically the idea that's kind of being passed down between the Kurta clan uh, elders or the leader or, um, you know, ruler, whatever he is. The guy that's the head, Papa Smurf, of the Kurta clan. He's basically uh, saying that everybody out there will judge you and will treat you harshly once they realize, you know, what you are. Like, we are a very small kind of segregated group of people for a reason and the reason that we're living out here by ourselves is because of the prejudice that we're getting from other people and it has Karapika as a young man or young boy uh, not really quite sure how old he's supposed to be he looked really really young um, and he also has a friend named Pyro I believe that's how you pronounce it right now Pyro is in like burning shit but just Pyro is in Pyro. And we immediately get the sense that him and Pyro are best friends, and also Karapika feels kind of r responsible for uh, some injuries that Pyro has. Pyro doesn't have the best vision, and he doesn't, uh, he isn't able to walk very well, and that is because uh, Karapika, being the adventurous little boy that he was, kind of got Pyro into a bit of a predicament where he had to, you know, rescue Karapika from falling off a cliff. And in doing so, he kind of screwed up the way that he walks, and it also kind of affected his vision somehow. He hurt, he hurt his eyes, so he's having problems with that. So Karapika feels responsible and wants to see the outside world and go to the outside world in order to find somebody that can help his friend, basically like find a doctor. But there's all these rules and stipulations about leaving uh, the clan. And also they find uh, him and Pyro, when they were younger, found a woman uh, who kind of stumbled into where the Kurta clan was, and she um, had a book with her about being a hunter, basically a story about a hunter of some sort, and we know what hunters are in this universe, obviously. And so they, she gave them the book, and they basically read it over and over again, and basically were learning more about the culture on the outside, and basically, you know, that's where uh, Karapika understood what a hunter was, or why, you know, one would want to be one, or the things you could do with it, and the adventure that you would go on and the knowledge that you would acquire and things like that. Fucking loud cars. And so Karapika decides that, you know, he wants to venture out into the outside world, and even though he's too young to take the test to see if he was going to or not, the elder decides, you know, to kind of let him take it, and of course he passes because Karapika is just, a, like, inherent genius in all things. I mean, not really. He's got a lot of anxieties and issues, and Karapika has things going on. You know, he's not a 
perfectly well-rounded uh, individual, but that works to his benefit as a character because he does have flaws and we see those flaws. But when it comes to kind of rational thinking or like setting things up to understand, like basically kind of making a, uh, I don't want to say a list, but like breaking down things to understand them. Karapika just has a very rational mind. He has a very like, he, it's, it's funny because he's kind of, He's run by both emotion and rationality at the same time. And I know that's kind of like strange. If you, you know Karapika, you know what I'm talking about. To explain it to someone that doesn't read or watch Hunter x Hunter, that might be kind of confusing. But he has like a very tactical, rational mind. And he can figure things out very, very well. And he's good at breaking stuff down. But then at the same time, he also gets into these moments because of his Kurta clan, his, his Scarlet Eyes. He gets into these rage impulsive moments as well. And it's cool kind of seeing him try to, like, get the balance between those, to walk the line in between those two aspects of his personality, because they both do shine very brightly in Karapika, which which makes him a great character. He's one of my favorite characters in the entire story. Um, so seeing this backstory was very, very cool to see. So he goes with Pyro out into the world, basically just on a shopping trip, and to kind of uh, test to the fact that he wouldn't reveal the fact that they had the scarlet eyes to kind of keep his emotions suppressed and keep him uh, unenraged. But to do this test, the elder hired a couple of bullies to basically kind of bully him and Pyro and kind of like try to get him agitated. Well, it works a little too well and basically Karapika's eyes go scarlet and he beats the ever-living shit out of these people who of course have to beg on their hand and knees like, yo, we were paid to do this, like, we're sorry, we're sorry, we're sorry. And then it's too late, because by the time he reveals his Scarlet Eyes, the people of society do exactly what the Kurta clan elders said that they would do, and they cast them out. They throw things at them, and they call them the devil, and yada yada. Basically this idea that like no matter how much you want to think people are helpful and for the greater good, and there's always going to be good people out there, yes, there will always be good people out there, but there will also always be prejudiced assholes out there that will judge you just simply by one aspect about you or the way you look or anything like that like it's very very easy to judge it's very easy to cast people aside and it's very easy to create an enemy out of nothing which people do because then they can kind of group together and rally behind a particular enemy and you see this in society all over and in the hunter hunter world it's no different um but regardless, he does manage to pass the test. Uh, there's this thing that he's supposed to put eye drops in, but Pyro switched the eye drops so that Karapika could pass. And, you know, that's all really cool. And so Karapika is granted access to leave. Um, and this is where he leaves. And then the, the manga ends very, very abruptly. Basically, Karapika just leaves. And then um, it says in just text without seeing it, yeah, six months after Karapika left, every single member of the Kurta clan was massacred. Which we knew, I know that, I know that they were, but the fact that this manga was so, like, upbeat and happy the entire, well, I was just saying, like, yeah, the prejudice of people, yada, yada, there's dark shit. Okay, there's dark shit going on, but we're seeing it through Karapika and Pyro's eyes, and, like, they have such a nice friendship, and things are very positive, and things are very light, the drawings are very, you know, you know, small boys, chibi, you know, happy, you know, like, little drawings and whatnot, and then we just get these black text, no images that just say, yeah, the the Kurta clan was completely massacred, their eyes were ripped out to make sure their eyes burned even brighter red, basically like children were murdered in front of their parents so that their eyes would get even more red before they took them and shit. Like, it just gets dark. And it's like so disturbing to me, I think mostly because I love the Phantom Troop. Like, the Phantom Troop is one of my favorite aspects of Hunter x Hunter one of my favorite group of villains ever. Um, and you see them work as a group, and you see them, how they interact with each other, and, like, they're very fun, they're very quirky, each one's got a, their own unique ability, and yada yada. And so you see the Phantom Troop from that perspective, from, like, seeing them hang out and how they work and how they have fun with each other and their, like, engaging personalities and whatnot. But then you see it from this perspective, at the, at the end of um, this uh, Karapika backstory, where you realize that the Phantom Troop went in here and just, like, tortured and killed these innocent people. And it really, like, puts you in a different perspective of what the Phantom Troop is and what they can do. Because, like, you don't... I mean, yeah, you know that the Phantom Troop killed the Kurta clan and that's why Karapika hates them. And you know that from the regular story. But just 
seeing the Kurta clan, seeing the, and like reading the fact that, yeah, they like murdered, you know, children in front of their parents, and parents in front of their children, and stuff like that, and you're just like, whoa, wait a second, the Phantom Troop is, are horrible people, you know, they are criminals, like, they did do this, um, at the end of the day, so, um, yeah, kind of, kind of strange, kind of like, gives you that, like, oh yeah, wait, I have to remember, I have to take my, uh, my own feelings about the Phantom Troop characters back for a second, and remember that, yes, they are horrible people, <laughs> at the end of the day, um, so, yeah, I, I did enjoy this backstory. I, I liked it. Um, it would have been cool if it could have got segued into the actual story somewhere. Somewhere Karapika could tell, like, a story of his past or something because it's very short. But um, I definitely enjoyed it. And, uh, um, yeah, so let me know what you guys think about it. Like, tell me what your thoughts about the Karapika backstory is down below. What are your thoughts on the ideas, themes behind it? Karapika as a character. He's one of my favorite characters. Um, what you thought about it. Everything like that down below. Thanks a lot for watching this video, guys. I really do appreciate it. Get some more manga reviews out for you guys very soon. Um, actually, if you guys want to stick around, I'm done talking about Hunter x Hunter now, but for the last couple of seconds, I ordered this, Finland Saga, Saga Book 1. So I'm going to be reading this and reviewing it. I'm pretty excited about that. And as everyone's telling me, you're so late to the game. I know I'm late to the game, but I got Attack on Titan Volume 1. And it's funny because a lot of people have been... Um, like arguing between these two because these were the two like most recommended manga to me from my viewers so i was like oh that's fine i'll get both and check them out but now i have people arguing that are like fuck vinland saga only read attack on titan some people are like attack on titan sucks only read vinland saga it's like guys like don't worry about it like just watch the video that you want to watch watch the video that represents the one that you like and you don't have to watch the other one it's okay like i mean please do watch it too but to keep things positive, guys. Let's talk about the things that we love and fuck the things that we hate. You know, it doesn't matter. So, thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe, comment. Talk to you later. What the fuck was that? I don't know.